Hi, everyone. Um, I want, oh, I hear more people coming. <laughs> um, I want to start off by saying thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, so before we get started, I'd like to ask everyone to keep their microphones on mute until we begin doing um, questions from you guys. Um, so this session is being recorded for future viewers and we would like to limit extra noise as much as possible. Um, and any questions you have may be submitted via the chat feature. You can either send it to everyone or personally DM me, both are fine. Um, and then just to introduce myself, my name is Lipsy and I'm currently a sophomore and now going to be a rising junior which is scary. Um, and I am a double major in political science and Latin American studies and hope to minor in sociology. Um, and that's one of the beauties of HWS is that I'm able to explore all my interests on campus. Um, in Geneva, I serve as a junior board member and a tutor for the Boys and Girls Club. And I was also recently inducted into the Williams Rural Society, a group that recognizes academics and community service. After graduation, I hope to attend law school. So this summer I'm gonna be prepping for the LSAT, um, which is also scary, but yeah. So that's just what I wanted to let you guys know about myself. I'm also involved on other things on campus, which if you guys have questions about, you can feel free um, to DM me as well. Um, and then I'm here today with Professor Susan Pliner. Um, she's waving right now. Um, so this fall, I was a writing colleague for Professor Fly for, for Professor Pliner's first year seminar called Metacognition and Social Justice, which was my FSEM my freshman year. So I took the classes basically a whole year, um, if you combine the time we spent together. And I worked with students in the classroom to prepare them for their writing assignments by outlining each assignment and also reading and commenting on their first drafts. So Professor Pliner, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you work with students in your first year seminar? Sure, I'd be happy to. And I think the reason Litsy uh, is stumbling on calling me Professor Pliner is because um, I, I don't uh, usually let my students call me Professor Pliner. My name is Susan, so I usually ask folks to do that. So Litsy, call me Susan. I know this is a formal thing, but definitely call me Susan. So um, welcome everybody. I'm so delighted to have you all here. Um, a little bit about my background. I um, I have been at Hobart and William Smith for 15 years. Um, your entering class will be my 16th entering class. Um, and it's an incredible place to be. Before here, I was at um, Brown University, Mount Holyoke University, or Mount Holyoke College, I should say, and Columbia University, um, and a couple others smattered in there. Um, but I have found my home here at Hobart and William Smith, um, and I love it. Um, my background a little bit, um, I have, when I went to college, I got uh, a degree in secondary education, social studies, to become a high school social studies teacher. Um, and then I didn't do that. And then I went back to school and I got a master's degree in special education um, to be a special ed teacher, um, grades five through 12. I did do that for a little while. And then I went back again to school and I got a doctorate in social justice, um, education and human development. Um, and so that's kind of the, I've kind of combined, uh, I've combined my education background and my social justice background for this first year seminar course that Litsy just talked about, which is the metacognition and social justice that she took and then um, was my writing colleague for. So um, that's just a little bit about my background. Um, the second part of the question, Lissy, was like, uh, uh, how do I say it again? Um, the academic skills all FSMs aim to build regardless of their specific academic focus. Oh, um, yeah, so, okay, let me tell you a little bit about um, oh, wait, the first I'm year. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was I like, wait. The next question. It was um, how you work with students in first year seminars. Oh, how I work with, thanks, thanks, let's see. Um, so, so there's a couple of things. One of the things that I do um, for first year students before they even arrive is I send you this um, long email um, letter welcoming you and telling you all about our class and really all about me. Um, I'll tell you about my daughter and my dogs and um, just so you get to know who I am as a person and um, that I am a real person. And um, I will ask you to do a few things like introduce yourself to me, send me some pictures of yourself doing something that you love so that I can greet you by 
face when you walk in my door for the first time, um, which this fall I'm hoping that we will do. We did it this fall too, but everybody was masked. Um, and um, I also um, ask you to do an introductory video. And so um, in my FSM, um, one of the goals for all FSMs is to build community uh, amongst you all as first year students, but also as us as a kind of a learning community. And I do that by um, getting to me getting to know everybody and you getting to know everybody before you even arrive. So everybody in the class does like a one minute video introducing us it, themselves and I give a, a list of questions and and then we post it up and everybody gets to look at them those, including like Litsy did one as my writing colleague. And then I also had an FSM mentor in that class too, Haley, and she did one. So everybody got to meet the teaching team. Um, and so community building was, is super important. So that's one of the things I do for students um, to build community, um, to make sure that you know who people are in your class as well. So, and then we continue to do that throughout the entire semester. That's, um, and like uh, uh, when Litzy was in my first year and we didn't have uh, COVID, we did things like um, I had everybody over for a Thanksgiving dinner, not on Thanksgiving, but um, everybody wanted a Thanksgiving dinner. So I made a whole Thanksgiving meal and invited the whole class over to my house and we had a Thanksgiving meal together. Um, and like last year we carved pumpkins. I went to the field and I got 20 pumpkins and we had class outside and Litzy and Haley prepared some activities to build community, but then we got to just carve pumpkins and talk. So, which was, which was totally awesome. So those are some of the things I do to make sure that your transition to college is um, filled with people that you know. Make sense? Excellent. All right. Okay, and then could you talk about, this is what I went ahead and asked, could you talk yeah. about the importance of first year seminars and the academic skills, all of them aim to build regardless of their specific academic focus? Yeah, so the FSM class is super cool um, for a number of different reasons, because because faculty across campus, no matter what their disciplines are, they get to, pro if they're getting to teach a first year seminar, they get to propose a class um, about something that they're totally interested in and passionate about, right? Not that they're not interested in their subject matter and passionate about that, but oftentimes faculty will like combine their um, academic background like chemistry with a passion for um, mystery writers, like mystery books, right? And combine that into a first year seminar, right? So they're really cool topics, really cool subject matters. Um, uh, but besides the, the subject matter, and you get to decide, you get to kind of list your, the ones that you're interested in, and you get, you get your, one of your top three. Um, and so you get to look through all the descriptions. But regardless of whatever the subject matter is, we all um, are committed to um, making sure that you're, there's like kind of four major things. One is, is that we're helping you with your transition to college, right? So that we do things like introduce you throughout the um, semester to, to um, um, other people on campus, clubs, like I know that I had, cause it was an election year, I had HWS votes come in and do a session for us. Um, you know, the debate team sometimes will do some, some stuff. So um, depending on, on the interest of the folks in the class, I will bring other people in. So you'll get to meet, meet and, and understand what's happening on campus. So transition to college is one. Um, the second one is, is that all um, first year seminars are um, writing intensive in a writing focused way, right? Which is why um, I had Litzy in my class as a writing colleague. I nominated her to be a writing colleague in her first year. Uh, she got accepted into that program. She decided she wanted to do it. So she, she, she went for it. She got trained and then I asked her to be my writing colleague for, for this past fall semester. Um, and so uh, we wrote a lot in our class, but, in, um, but it was always in stages, right? It wasn't like you have a 20 page research paper and um, go and it's due on this date. So like, and I don't have research papers at all, but, um, but there were stages to the paper. And then, you know, after your draft, you meet with the writing colleague, et cetera. Um, before you actually hand it in. So there's multiple times to, 
to build and um, really um, work on your writing. So writing intensive. The third thing is this communication. Our, our goal is to help build communication skills. And that means like lots of class discussions, lots of opportunities for present, presenting your ideas and your thinking. Um, and so there's a focus on that. And then the fourth one is critical thinking, right? We're all, all really um, interested in helping to build your critical thinking skills because you're going to need, need that in every class that you take at HWS. Um, and I think Liz will probably talk about this when I, if we get a chance for me to ask her some questions. But um, for me, critical thinking looks a lot like I ask the question why in my class a lot. So like you say something and I'll say, well, why? Um, or I'll say, how do you know that? Or um, I'll say, well, what evidence do you have for that, right? Um, and that's a way for us to think about um, and also the authors that we read, right? I'll say, why do you think this person wrote it? Um, what do you think their purpose for writing it was? Um, you know, what do they, what do you, what, you know, um, who does it impact and who does it not, right? So just um, engaging in that kind of critical thinking skills. So those are the four things that we, that all first year seminars do, um, regardless of the subject matter and to differing degrees, right? They're not all the same. Um, and if you guys have any questions, now would be the time to send them in the chat because I'm going to be going over our last question. So um, how do faculty advisors assist in assist students in discovering what they want to focus on academically since many students enter HWS as undecided and declaring a major? Absolutely. So I don't know if you all know this, but um, for your FSEM, when you take your FSEM, you all are going to take an FSEM. It's going to be one of your four courses your first semester, right? Everybody takes an FSEM. Um, your FSEM faculty member is your advisor until you declare a major. So like I've been Litzy's advisor um, until she just declared her major. Um, and so like this act, uh, advising period, I will not be advising her. Her major advisor will be advising her. Um, but, um, so your faculty members are your advisor. So it's really important for me to get to know you and what you're interested in, um, and how you think so that when we sit down to have conversations about what courses to take and what you might be interested in, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. I'm going to point you in some directions. Um, the beauty, beautiful part about the liberal arts curriculum is, um, it is our expectation that you will take risks, that you will um, expand your ideas, right? And expand what you know. And um, the high school, most high school curriculums are pretty standard. Um, you might get some elective opportunities, but um, in college, the, the majors and minors, there's so many of them and diverse, so you don't even know what they are. Um, and so like, I will, um, you know, so what is really common is first year students will say, I want to take psychology, I want to take sociology, I want to take English, right? So all the things that you, that you have some semblance of, of knowledge about, maybe a history class, whatever. And I think Litsy would probably tell you that I'd say, okay, yeah, 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 that's really great. Okay, so, but let's talk about, let, let me read you this course description. Um, and so I will push students to take classes that maybe you haven't even heard of before. Um, and nothing bad comes of that, right? Because if you hate the class, you go, that's not for me. Like, I don't really like that. I'm not going to take another class like that, but you'll have learned something really interesting in that class and you'll have learned something about yourself. But like, let's see, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, you were like, no, I'm going to go, I'm going to be a sociology major when you first entered in, right? Are you a sociology major? No. <laughs> Why? Why is that? Because you pushed me to take, so there's a story during um, advising week, which you guys will have when you first get here because you only are given, I think one or two courses. Um, so what happened was we had to choose our courses and I wanted to take intro to social so bad and I didn't get in because um, obviously there's a limit or capacity to how many students can enter in each class and I just didn't get lucky enough to get it um, and I was really upset and then 
Susan was like, maybe you should look at this Chicana feminism and visual culture class. And I was like, I'm not interested in art. Like, I don't know what Chicana feminism is. I was like, no, like, I do not want to take this class. And then, but I, I had no other option than to take it. So I took it and I really learned a lot about Latin America, what my identity as like a Mexican woman is, especially within the US. And now I'm a Latin American studies major. So yeah completely threw me off of like which I'm grateful for because now I love my major I love what I'm learning within my classroom um but yeah something very unexpected that I didn't really expect I didn't even know that was a major like I didn't know that was a concentration or yeah I had no idea but yeah that's something that happened. so the question the other part of your question let's see um is that the um like how do I advise for students that may not um, know what they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, there's so there's two ways to think about this. If you are one of those students that like everybody's been asking you since you were a junior in high school, what do you think you want to study in college? And you kind of were like, I've got no idea. So you just pick something and now you think that that's what you want to do. That's totally fine. You can start in those, those courses. And then because you have to take a broad breath, we'll talk about what other areas you might want to think about. I'm going to ask, ask you to suspend your, um, your um, focus of where you're headed in your first semester and probably your first year, mostly because there's so much out there. Um, but even if there isn't, and you're still gonna do, uh, even if you still wanna do that after your first year, that's totally fine, you're still gonna get there. So um, um, with the exception of the sciences, if you're coming in and you're gonna say I'm pre-med, then we have some like really specific tracks you're gonna take and I'm still gonna push you to take some other courses to well round you. Um, but, um, but you know, there's, there, you, know, you have to take the sequences to, to get those um, prerequisite science classes in. If you're somebody that has known since they were three years old or four years old, I'm gonna be this and it is a passion of yours, that's awesome too. And then I'm gonna have conversations with you about um it's a very small population of people that are like that but um if you are that person i'm going to have conversations with you about so if you're going to be this what are the other kinds of knowledge bases that would help you to be the best at that like the most well-rounded the most most deep um the most breadth um and then and then um i'm going to talk to you about complementary complementary kind of coursework to help you um, with that. So it doesn't matter if you know, um, you're still going to get some breadth and depth, or if you have absolutely no idea, that's super fun for me. And we'll get to know each other and you'll get to know your advisor and, um, you'll have a lot to look forward to too. All of you will have a lot to look forward to. So that's pretty much how I do that. So, um, this is a, like a wild time for you all, right? I mean, it's getting down to it. You got to figure out where you're going to go to college. So now ask us some questions. You've got somebody who's been here for 15 and somebody who's been here for two. Um, so what do you want to know about HWS that would help you to um, think about it? Um, okay, someone sent me directly. Can you talk about living learning communities and do all first years in the same FSM live together in their dorm? Okay, great question. Awesome question. Okay, so we do have a thing called the living learning community. Um, and um, there are some courses, not all courses, like my course is not a living learning community. A living learning community, um, the students um, will live together and they'll take their FSM together. So they're, um, they're F and oftentimes your FSM course will meet in the residence hall. Like, so you live in JPR and there's a classroom in JPR. And so the faculty member comes into JPR um, and you'll have your class there as a living learning community. Um, and then, um, so that's a living learning community. And then there's also learning communities where courses are linked to another course. So like, um, oh gosh, I wish I had an example off the top of my head of a learning community, but like, so a first year seminar faculty member is linked to another content course, another faculty member. So in your first semester, you will take your FSM and the other um, linked course, the linked course will be everybody in your FSM plus a whole other host of other students. So it won't only, it won't be two courses that is only your FSM. 
um, but there'll be reserved seats in that second course that's linked. And then the faculty members oftentimes do joint um, work, like they'll, um, they have joint learning goals or they'll bring in uh, speakers or um, books to get, they might do books together. So learning communities, you're guaranteed. So you're in those courses together your first semester, but you have choices. So you don't have to do a living learning community. Um, like my class is not. I think it's really, you know, I think it's good if you want to live with folks for your FSM because you want to build that community. I also think it's good if you're like, I just want to live somewhere and take my classes too. It just depends on you. Great question. Yeah. And just to add on to that, I know I have friends who had living learning companies and they, they liked it because they just do all their homework together in their common room, um, which I think is really helpful and fun. You kind of have like a given friend group, but I also enjoyed meeting other people that weren't in my class. Um, but yeah, that's something. And then someone, um, and thank you, Allison, for sending information about the individual major or independent major, I mean. Um, but Susan, have you helped anyone declare an independent major and what did that look like? Uh, yeah, actually. So it's super interesting. Um, I think um, Ali Bonagora, she, um, she was in your class, right? Let's see. Was it no, Allie? but I know her. I know she just yeah. independent. Yeah. Me. So, oh, so she must be a junior already. Oh my God, the years are just flying by. So Allie came in and she was like, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm pre-med. And she like put her head down. I mean, the first time I met her, she had all four years, every semester, all four years, all mapped out in like three different scenarios. I was like, whoa, okay. Um, you're like driven in this way. Um, so um, she really wanted to be pre-med. She really wanted to be pre-med. And then um, she started to realize that she still wants to be a doctor. So that's not the case, but she was super interested in kind of public health. Um, and she learned that through some of the other classes, some sociology classes that she took. And um, she realized that she wanted to have more of a breadth instead of just the kind of the pre-med track. So she, um, she has a biology professor who is her advisor, but she declared an independent major in public health. It's got some long fancy title name, um, but it's really cool. So it's really um, public health. And she's, and the other interesting thing is, is that she, because we have this like really cool internship program, but she got an internship. She really wanted to be involved in the Geneva community. She was also a soccer player, um, but she wanted to be involved in the Geneva community. So she is working for um, the Finger Lakes, I don't know, community health of the Finger Lakes or something. And she's, um, she's got an internship and she's been doing it for, this is her second year or so. She'll have worked in this, um, in this organization for three years by the time she graduates. She wants to completely do it. She's doing all this really cool public health work. Um, so she's getting to like practice it, but also learn about it. And she created her own major, which was super cool. Um, I've also had over the years, we have a social justice studies minor. Um, which is awesome. And if anybody's interested in that, I'm on the steering committee and also my first year SEM um, kind of preps for that. Um, but um, I had a student that really wanted to major in, in social justice. And so she constructed a really comprehensive um, major that allowed for her to do some focus areas of social justice that was an independent major. So there's lots of opportunities. If you don't have what you want, um, we have faculty that would be interested in doing that with you. Okay, <clears throat> and then someone asked, why did I choose HWS? So um, I chose HWS because of the small classroom sizes. I came from a very large public high school in Los Angeles. And I think something I wished I had more of while I was in high school was um, having a small classroom just so I could ind like individually get along with my professors like Susan and I like text all the time like we have each other's number and I think that's what I really wanted in high school. And I think also having the knowledge that it have like aspirations of going into law school after graduation. Um, I knew I know how important it is to have letters of rec from professors that um, you get along with and who know you very well. And I think I really saw that HWS gave me that opportunity, but also just 
um, I think having a small classroom, but also having a pretty small school allows you to um, take advantage of all the resources a school has because everyone's out to like, everyone knows you and then everyone's like, okay, let's see needs help with this. So what can we do to help Litzy? And I feel like that's what my experience has been here. Every time I need help with something, Susan knows who to direct me to. At this point, I feel like I know everyone working in every office. <laughs> and I feel like that's something I really felt I could only get here at HWS because of the size of the school and also just the class classrooms um but then let me see after that question it says um is there any focus on mental health and i'm assuming just specifically in fsems um well so uh, the focus on mental health i mean i think there are some uh courses that you could take if that's what you're if you're interested in something like studying um yes um, if you're interested in the resources to support mental health on, on campus, we have a counseling center um, and um, they do all these trainings. I've been through the trainings multiple, multiple times as well. Um, but, um, and there's lots of, and there's also a couple of student groups that support mental health on campus as well. Um, I know we have um, a group now that is doing random acts of kindness, HWS random acts of kindness, which I love. Um, but also there's a mental health club on campus as well. Um, and so there's, so yes, there's lots of support for mental health. Plus as an advisor, I'm always here to talk to too. I mean, I'm not a counselor, so not in that way, but um, absolutely for the struggle when you're having struggle, I'm, uh, you know, as advisors are here for you. And I think just another thing to add on to that, um, I think having an advisor is also really helpful because whenever I wasn't feeling good about something, I tell Susan and Susan was super understanding about everything um but yeah i think that's something cool about having an advisor once you walk into college rather than like just having to declare your major and then having an advisor um so that was something that was really helpful let me see i'm getting other questions um we have some about like just oh okay there's a lot coming in sorry <laughs> um and then okay someone said can you explain what an fsem is again like they're ha having trouble understanding like the concept of an fsem yeah an fsem is first year seminar right so um uh it's a it's a specific class so all first year students take an fsem it's part of the requirements towards graduation you have to take and pass an fsem your first year seminar um to graduate so um they're not like, they're, they're disciplinary specific, so they're content specific, but they are not like, it's not a sociology class. So like I, I have um, uh, kind of appointments in social justice studies and education. It's not an education class, it's a first year seminar class. So it's a small seminar, uh, 15, 14, 15, 16 students, um, your faculty members, your advisor, and, um, and you, everyone takes one. You all will take a first year seminar. So you'll it will be one of your four courses in your first semester. And you select it by topic. Like you get to like rank order them by the topics that are of interest. Okay, and we are running out of time. So um, I'll just ask you this last question. What is the workload like in the first year seminar? Oh, that is super interesting. Um, I, I like I I think I hesitate to ask you. Let's see what you think about that. Um, I so here's what I would say. Um, I don't give exams, so there were no exams in my class. That doesn't mean first year seminars don't give exams, but I never gave an exam. I I, I don't give exams. Um, so uh, there were papers to write. Um, lots of reading. We read. We read and discuss the readings every class period. Um, I do these activities called pink time um, as part of my class, which is um, twice or three times a semester. Um, I cancel class, um, but you have to spend time learning something that you've always wanted to learn, but you choose. Um, and then you have to talk to me about, you, you write a little piece and then you tell the class also, um, like a one pager, uh, why you chose it, what you learned, how you knew you learned. And it's all part of the process of understanding yourself as a learner, but you get to like totally learn something completely new. Um, 
Um, and so, and then we progressively, the presentations get progressively, like by the last pink time, you're doing a Pocacica, um pink time, um, where you're doing, um, Pocacica is a technique that comes out of architecture. It's um, 20 slides, 20 seconds a piece, and the slides are timed for 20 seconds. So you have to, um, you you have to develop your your presentation really well and it has goes like this because that's all you get i actually only do nine slides for 20 seconds a piece um but then you're you're doing a presentation for the class so we do a lot of like reading writing talking um and presenting but let's see would you say that the what would you say about the workload I would say it's very similar to all your other classes, I think. And it also depends on what your FSM is. Some are very reading intensive. Like I would say Susan's, yours was more reading intensive compared to people who I know took like science focused FSMs, which had a lot more labs and stuff and required a little bit more time than um, I would say yours because they had a lab in addition, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's FSMs, the workload is very much what the workload like is in every other classroom um and obviously i feel like fsm professors know like the students they're dealing with because you're all freshmen so they are i think a little bit more understanding if they see you struggling or anything um but yeah i would say similar to every other class um okay and it is now 3 33 so that is all the time we have for today and if you guys have any questions i know there was some we couldn't get to um and then some of them that you guys specifically had about um, student life and stuff like that. So I'm going to be inserting my email and my Instagram on there in case any of you want to contact me that way, um, because I know a lot of email seems kind of weird sometimes, especially when you're like in high school. Um, so yeah, you guys can contact me through Instagram if you would like. So thank you for joining us. If you have further questions, like I said, don't be shy, afraid to get in contact with us individually. Um, especially if it's even later on in the decision making process and then we dropped our emails and our instagram or i dropped my instagram in the chat um so thank you so much for joining us today and we wish you the best of luck as you make your final decisions